In this particular video, we are going to understand how to write a code to control a control wall. You can see here how to write a code to control this particular control wall by using PID in Delta VDCS. Before writing a control program, it's important to understand control loop we have here in this example. You can see that we have a water getting into this pipeline and to control the water flow, you have a control wall and to measure how much is the flow, you have a flow meter. Flow meter would be connected to analog input card of a Delta VDCS, which is gonna be then connected to the controller. Inside the controller, you would be writing this particular PID block to control this control wall. Very soon I would show you how to write this program based on the program that you are going to be writing inside that particular controller, Delta V DCS controller, Delta V DCS PID output would be connected to your control wall. Based on the output, you would be deciding how much should be the opening or closing of the wall based on the requirement of the flow. Before we go ahead and start working on this particular project, it's important to understand few foundational concepts because once I would be using that, for instance, you see that back calculation input, there are a lot of other concepts like that which are very important to understand for you before we actually talk about the programming side. So let's get into the foundation first. Concepts I'm going to talk right now are very important. Without that, there is no possibility that you can learn PID in Delta V DCS. You would definitely give up if in the case you are going ahead without understanding these concepts. Before we talk further about today's topic, it's important if in the case you like these kind of videos, one thing is very important. One favor you can give us, hit the like button. If in the case you haven't subscribed this YouTube channel, consider subscribing, turns your notification on so that you don't miss any video. Let's talk about the foundation now. So there's two ways, reverse acting and direct acting. What is this when you talk about PID loop, especially in Delta V DCS? Reverse acting. This guy is there. When you try putting up your input high, this would get down. If you talk about heating application, that's where you have a input high. Like if your input, if there is like too much heating already, then what you need to do, you have to control the heating, like you have to out, you have to get your output low, right? If there is too much heating, your heater need to be get you need to get low, right? But when you talk about cooling application, which is when you you have uh, too much heat, you should have a too much cooling app, you know, need to be introduced. Like for example, there is too much warm, you would put up your um, your AC on more high. So this guy need uh, introduction that is in a PLC or PID terms or DCS control terms, especially in PID, this is called reverse acting. And this guy is called direct acting. So reverse acting is when input is getting up, output will get to get low. And when in a direct acting, when input is high, output is high. Okay. So uh, now we have a bumpless transfer. What is mean of, what is the meaning of bumpless transfer? Because if you don't, if you're not clear about the things that exist in, you know, like if you talk about PID tuning, there are few things that need to be like a PID block, few things that need a clear introduction. So I'm just summarizing that information, what is needed. There's nothing on this whole slide setup and you're aware that even in the whole training there was not a single thing which was not in use which I discuss on this training. So this is same here. So that when you talk about the bumpless transfer, the term bumpless transfer refer to the process being controlled, meaning that process is not disturbed when switching the PID from auto to manual. Like there is the auto, auto is just by PID and manual is by operator. So when you actually put auto to manual, Normally, you know, your control loop deviate too much. To take care about that, we call it a bumpless transfer. That is a process that when you take care about switching of auto to manual, or manual to auto, and you make it smooth. 
Okay. The most modern PID controllers have built in bumpless transfer. This is very, very important thing. Um, there's a back calculation output and there is a PK calculation in output. Uh, there's an output and in, okay? So that need to be connected. Back calculation out would be connected to back calculation in. We you would see in a PID block when I would be doing an exercise right in front of you, back calculation out would be connected to back calculation in. And why we need to connect it, that's for bumpless transfer and then to prevent a reset windup. Now you would say, what is a reset windup? Reset windup or windup is a long steadening problem with PID control. And it has been solved in a different ways over the time on different system. But when you talk about, there's a too much deviation between set point and PV and that is prolonging. Like your controller is not able to get in your PV close to set point. That's what we call it reset wind up. So that means like for a long time, your problem exists, the error is still there and it's not able to, your, your output is getting up, but it's not able to actually meet your requirement. That's what we call it recent wind up. To avoid that, uh, just keep in your mind that back calculation in would be uh, connected to, uh, sorry, back calculation output would be connected to back calculation in. You would see when you would be doing the PID implementation. That's a feedback. In short terms, you can say how much is your output that would be fed into the block again as an input. Any questions? <clears throat> okay. First of all, we need to have a um, analog input. Okay. And we would put analog output. In advanced control, you would see this PID. You are going to put it. First thing you would do, you would collect connect that input to output of that simulate in to input of the PID. And then output of this guy would need to be connected here. Cascade in. Now you see this back calculation out, what I was talking about. So this back calculation out need to be connected to back calculation in. Okay. okay. So we have a connection from here to this guy. To make it look better, you can do like this. Okay. So this out is connected here and this out is connected to in back calculation in. To white, your reset wind up and bump list transfer concept, which he actually talked about before. So uh, very important thing now, which we really need to understand is um, there are a few things that you have to have here, which are not actually there. So how to get up something in a PID, which never, which is not existed. Even you can see there's no set point here. So you have to click right, show parameter, browse, First, first of all, you have to understand, I want this parameter to appear at the input side of the PID block. So I selected type as input, get into the browse. Now you have to search for set point. So this set point is right here. Just click okay and click okay. Now you would see the set point is there also, right? Now it's added. There are a few things that you have to actually take care of when you are going to make a PID loop. So that is control options. So when you cl click on this, here you can actually make reverse or direct acting. By default, when you haven't selected anything, this is reverse acting. But when you are trying to you know, select it as a direct acting, then you can do it like this. You understand the point? So I click on direct acting and click OK. Now this guy is ready. OK, so um, good. Now we can give a set point some value. 
Where is the set point? Set point is here. I want my PID to be at 89. And uh, where is the set point is good. Good cascade. Okay. Then I want this guy to be at some value, right? I don't want this to be set point. I, I need to give it some value here to simulate in also. So I would enable it. I would give it 80 value. Okay, so this is now 80 value. And this set point is termed as your, uh, how, much was, well, how much was the value for the set point? 89. Okay, now uh, if we give it a 10 value, for instance, this AI, that would behave in a better way, I think. Let me, instead of getting a high value, we can give it a same 60, 50 value. That's a better way. Now, uh, you can see there are many options that exist. If you come here into this block, you can also see there are many options. But first of all, we have to understand. See the gain is there. There is a reset. There is an I term, P and ID. P, I, N, D. Rate is there. That is there. And you have a reset and you have a gain also. And you have a outscale that you have actually scaled a value that your output would be between zero to 100. It would not exceed more than that. I'm sure that my process value or my control wall is between zero to hundred percent. There is no more actually opening of the control wall more than hundred percent. Then in that click, uh, case, you can see, you can put up a zero limit for a low limit and high limit would be adjusted to hundred. You can see here, right? Any questions? It's okay. This, this is your high limit. And similar way, you can also give a low limit and high limit to input values also. But yeah, this is a set point. And one important thing with mode thing. Yeah, you can see the mode option here. It's in the manual. You can put it auto. You can put it manual here. You can put it cascade. You can put cascade remote and remote output. But we would be talking about auto and manual in this case. So I put it in manual and I'm trying to give a value and uh, I need to save this program. I need to download it and then see what is the response. Upload to the download uh, to the station. You can first upload it, select okay. And it's gonna upload. And then uh, download anyway, point. So now you see you put up a value of 50 and your set point is 89, uh, 79 and you're trying to give the output value to some value. Let's see. And uh, I want to give this output some value. So I'm trying to give out manually. So I'm trying this to be 30. Okay. So I put this output manually 30 value. Now I'm going to change the mode of operation to automatic to see how it operate. So I select mode and make it into auto and click. So now we have to tweak with the PID terms to see the response. So uh, if you see that we have a gain here, so I want my gain to be high. So what I, where is the gain? The best way is put here and just select some give some value and I give it one to see the response. Now see the value is changing. When I give a gain, gain value, you see the value of feedback is also changing. And that back calculation is getting back to here also. You see, that's what I was talking about. The feedback is going to be fed in, in the back calculation. Now system is trying to reach to that value. This is a set point 89 and your uh, value is 50, okay? So the system is trying to maintain that value. So if you try giving a value, for example, 675, 
see the response is changing. So based on what you have at the AI, which is your input, your output would regulate the flow. So this output would be actually connected to control valve. And this AI is connected to the temperature transmitter in the case what we were actually talking about. That's all for today. If in the case you like this video, consider hitting the like button. If in the case you haven't subscribed this YouTube channel, consider subscribing. Until next video, take care and Allah Hafiz.